how many times have you run out of time while taking an SAT or practice SAT exam and then not getting the score you want. Luckily, through my SAT journey, I was able to find many tips and tricks that I used to personally improve my efficiency on the SAT so I never had to worry about time ever again. In fact, I used to finish with more than like half the time remaining. And here in this video, I'll be showing you guys exactly how to manage your time on the SAT exam so you never are that student who ends up having to guess B for the rest of the answer choices because you have like one second left and you have 10 questions left. So starting off, we will go over SAT math and SAT reading and some general time management. So starting off with SAT math, right? this is obviously the easier section. This is a section where you guys will really be astounded by how fast you can actually do all the problems. So the first tip I can give you guys for the SAT math section to make sure you manage your time efficiently is to set a time marker for the SAT non calc What I mean by this is you want to set a goal that by the 10 to 12 minute mark, you should have finished all 20 SAT non calc problems. Now you might look at me like I'm crazy, but if I was able to do it in five minutes, twice or three times, I'm sure you all can do it in double the time. And I'm literally not the smartest of the students. So you probably can finish it even faster than me. Now I did just drop that bomb and say that you guys should be able to finish the problems in 10 minutes, but I didn't tell you how exactly you can do that. Well, what you gotta do is learn all the necessary tricks, tips, and patterns for the ST math non calc section. And there's two key ways to do that. The first way, Let's do a bunch of ST math problems. Yes, guys, you guys know it. Practice makes perfect, all right? By constantly doing ST math problems, whether on Khan Academy, practice exams, or any other medium, maybe in like the college ST math panda book, you'll be exposed to the same types of problems that will teach you the same patterns and tricks over and over again, right? You're gonna be constantly solving systems of linear equation problems, constantly solving quadratic problems, and everything will be the same, just the numbers will be a little different, so you're gonna quickly understand the methodology to solve these types of problems and that'll be a piece of cake. Now, yes guys, this will take a lot of time. In fact, a lot of people say to master something, you should spend 1,000 to 10,000 hours doing it. And if you're like me or any other SANE student, I'm pretty sure you are not about to spend over like 30 hours studying for the SAT math section. Like no way you're about to spend 1,000 hours. So to even cut down that 30 hour time to like 10 hours and maybe even less, I will teach you guys the second thing that you can do to learn all the necessary tricks, tips, and patterns. And that's check out my SAT math course, which is a six hour course that has all the tips, tricks, patterns, strategies, methodologies that you need to match the SAT math section and get an 800 score on it. The reviews are already in, everyone loves it. I highly recommend you guys use it and there's a discount code in the description below. And now moving on to the SAT calc section. All right, now that we've got the non-calc covered, right? You guys might be like, for the SAT calc section, do I have to press the buttons at lightning speed to make sure I finish it really fast? No, there are some key time management tips for this section as well. Right, you see, there's a common misconception that is people think because this is the SD calc section, they now have to be the calculator whiz, freaking super calculator man. They can solve every single problem using a calculator and they have to use a calculator. No, guys, that is a common misconception. You do not have to use a calculator. In fact, most of the SD calc problems will be able to be solved by you, right, by hand without having to use a calculator. And a lot of students don't realize that. In fact, the students who do use a calculator for most of the problems are the ones that end up, you know, running out of time. If you're one of the students who, you know, use the calculator for more than like eight problems on that section, you most likely miss some tips, tricks, and patterns. So you should go back and study a little more and practice a little more because I promise you, you do not need a calculator for more like, for like max 10 problems, okay? The rest can be done via 10. Now there are some calculator tricks, right? For example, if you're trying to find the solution between two linear equations, all you gotta do Right, let's put one to y1, the other equation to y2, and then find the intersection, right? If you're given a quadratic, right, you just put that to y1 and put y2 equals zero, and then find the intersections, and that that's the solution for the quadratic, right? You found the, the left zero and the right zero. So these are some key calculator tricks that you can use to solve problems in like, boom, seconds. A lot of times, if you know how to factor, and just uh, isolate the equation, a variable, you probably will not even have to use a calculator. And by the way, guys, we talked about being nice to SAT non-calc. Did you guys know that by being nice to SAT non-calc, you actually improve your abilities on the SAT calculator section? Because I talked about how earlier how you don't really need a calculator for most of the problems. And by being a master of the non-calc section, you're gonna start seeing these same patterns and strategies in the SAT calculator section. Because guys, remember, this is still the SAT math, right? The big umbrella is SAT math. Yes, it's divided to calc and non-calc, but the overall strategies and patterns are practically the same. So if you're a master and non-calc, you're gonna see the calculator section being so, so much easier. 
you're gonna be like wow like i have so much time left i can literally go to china and come back and then go to france and then come back and still have like five minutes remaining now before i talk about sg reading i want you guys to like the video because this video will improve your score so much that i want other people to see it as well and you guys can help me with that by liking this video now moving on to sg reading all right the best thing you can do to improve your speed on it is to pray because there's absolutely no hope now nah, i'm just kidding obviously there's hope come on you guys have me so the first tip and this tip is like kind of self-explanatory it's to read faster like don't be a snail when you read you got to re realize that Hey buddy, you're you're on the clock. You gotta start reading a little bit faster. Now you guys might be like, does that mean I become this guy? No, I mean read faster, but still understand what you're reading and what you're comprehending. You see, you never want to sacrifice accuracy for speed because at that point, I can read a passage in like five seconds and then get all the corresponding questions wrong. What was the point of reading in five seconds? And in fact, if you are the person who's struggling between understanding whether to read faster or slower, honestly, I would just read slower, okay? Read slower until you're able to get questions correct consistently. And then as you start realizing the SAT reading patterns, you want to start reading faster and faster and faster, upping your speed while maintaining that accuracy or improving your accuracy, okay? You do not want to sacrifice your accuracy for the speed because at that point, you're just canceling it out and you're not really improving as an SAT reading test taker. Now the second tip is to annotate. You guys will be like, oh my God, I hate writing margins. I'm already reading, now I gotta write too. Come on. Well, you see, you comprehend better when you annotate because you're forcing your brain to actually make connections. When you're writing like a summary of the paragraph down, you're actually thinking, what did I just read? What was this paragraph about? And this helps you because now when you go, you know, answer a question, you no longer have to reread as much as if you didn't annotate because now you actually understand more you can remember things off your dome and you don't have to constantly reread and waste time rereading because that's really what hurts students on the sd reading exam right they're constantly rereading the same paragraph over and over again just to answer like two or three questions when if they had understood it the first time those two or three questions that took six minutes would have been solved in like two minutes maybe one minute and with annotating another big thing is to read questions first before you read the passage now you guys might be like, why? Well, why would you, you know, do something if you don't know why you're doing it, right? Why are you reading the SAT reading passage? Don't you want to at least know why you're reading it in the first place? And that's why you want to read the questions first. So you already have you know, something in mind about, hey, okay, let me try to find this in the text as I read. And by reading questions first, you're going to have these questions in your mind. So as you're reading the passage, you can start answering these questions off the dome. And as you're reading, you can quickly flip through that question, answer it, and then go back to reading. And then when you go back to all the questions you haven't answered, you're going to be like, oh my God, I already solved this question. I already solved this question. I already solved this question. And you're going to find that you solving the questions becomes much faster and you're able to move on to the next, next passage much faster as well. And next thing you know, you have like, you have 20 minutes left to finish the ST reading section and you're done already. Those are some hot ST math tips, some hot ST reading tips to make sure you are more efficient and you can manage your time better. Now some general tips, and the first tip is like a funny one, that's to carry a watch. Like I don't think students realize that the best way to actually pace yourself when you're taking an exam is to carry a watch and time yourself, right? Because how are you gonna know how much time is left if you're not actually timing yourself? Like, what are you, a psychic? Like you can't use your phone, because if you do, you're definitely gonna be sent out the room and flagged for cheating. You see, a lot of students don't realize that the number one mistake that students make when it comes to ST reading or math when it comes to timing is they don't know how much time is left. They're spending like five minutes on one problem and don't realize, hey buddy, it's time to go on to the next problem because they don't, they don't have a sense of the time. They're too wrapped up in solving the ST problem that they forget, yo, you only have like two minutes per problem. You can't be wasting so much time. And without a watch, you really don't have that reminder, right? You're just betting on like your hunch. Another thing you can do, and this is what I used to do because even though I said carry a watch, I actually didn't even own a watch when the, I took the SAT exam. So what I used to do, and this was um, a little funny, was I would just raise my hand as I'm taking the exam and just like call the proctor and be like, I'm seeing how much time is left. But I wouldn't even look at them. I will keep on working, raise my hand. They walk over to me and I'd be like, um, yeah, so how much time is left? And they'll just answer it. I wouldn't even look them in the eye. Like it was low-key disrespectful because you know, you're calling someone, you're not even giving them attention, but it's my score over giving them attention i really don't care i am trying to prove my score and i know you guys are too so just as you're working just quickly raise your hand the proctor will come and be like hey how much time is left they'll tell you and you keep on working 
right? You don't have to stop working. You don't have to waste any time. Just keep on working and all you gotta do is raise your hand. And trust me, the proctor, even if they think you might be a little bit rude, a little bit disrespectful, they'll understand because they understand that you're stressed and you try to get the score you want. So they're not even gonna say much. Now, these tips will help you get better with SAT timing by a lot. So please let me know if you guys enjoyed these tips, like the video, comment, and subscribe for more banger SAT videos.